Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a really fun review and it's a special one because I'm collaborating with my friend Jane, artist Jane Bush on YouTube. She reached out to me a couple months ago and she said, hey Lindsay, I've been watching your channel for a while and I don't think you've ever used Holbin colored pencils. Would you like to try a set? I've got an extra set hanging around. And I said, boy, that'd be really fun because I've seen people rave about those pencils and um, they've been really hard to find. And then I said, you know, I think I have a set of pencils that you've never tried. So I sent her some pencils, she sent me these, and we are going to review them today. So if you want to see the pencils that I sent her, make sure you click the link in the video description and you check out her review. And if you're coming here from Jane's channel, welcome. I'm so glad to have you here and I hope you stick around for a while. Please hit the subscribe button if you want to see more reviews, tutorials, and fun art and craftsy stuff. And I would be so happy to have you part of the community. So without further ado, we're going to go to the review the funny thing about these pencils are they feel kind of familiar and I have another set of pencils that perform very very similarly that you may have in your stash already so um, make sure you check that out they do have some definitely unique characteristics of their own but I did learn a lot about these pencils and I'm happy to share my findings with you so after you watch this video make sure you check out Jane's video and without further ado let's get to the review Let's take a look at the Holbein pencils. Now this is a set of 36 and these are a couple of the artworks that I did with the pencils. Now I want to let you know right off the bat, the pencils I use most often are my Prismacolor Premier Color pencils, which are a very soft pencil. And my absolute favorite color pencils now, I believe I would say are the Derwent Lightfast pencils. So both of those pencils tend to be softer, tend to be a little on the opaque side, and that's my personal preference for color pencils. It doesn't mean they're better or worse than any other brands, it's just what I tend to like and what I tend to grab to. I also tend to work fairly quickly, so I like a pencil that lays down a lot of color at once. So that might not be what you like, and I want you to kind of keep that in mind as you're listening to my review, and as always, I encourage you to look at other people's reviews of the same products before you decide on an expensive brand of colored pencil to make sure that you've seen all sides of it from people with different preferences. I have to say I did really enjoy using these pencils. Um, when I worked on this one here, it's just a, a crocodile eye, I loved how I could use a limited color palette of like I think I maybe used um, six or seven colors. I used all the different greens and like yellow ochres, teal, and black and white in the set, and I was able to mix the colors that I needed. So I really like that because I feel if you can mix from fewer colors, you get more color harmony in your artwork. And this one here, I um, just grabbed a few spools and buttons and I made myself a little still life. And I was able to mix the, you know, few colors that I needed to get that turquoise blue. I was able to mix the yellow, orange, pink, and red to get that coral. And I was able to mix the yellows and grays to get the uh, the yellow spool here. So I found using them was very pleasant. Um, they weren't as soft as I expected them to be. Now let's take a look at the pencils here. When everyone, when I watched reviews on Holbein years ago, uh, because I didn't really think I would, they were going to be something that I would have access to, um, because at that time they weren't sold in the United States, people told me how soft they were and how creamy. So when I got these, I was expecting them to be as soft, if not softer, than my Prismacolor pencils that I've been using. I've been using Prismacolor since I was five, back in the old barrel Prismacolors, and I've purchased them throughout the years, so um, I've kind of used them in all their different iterations from when they went from uh, Barrel to um, Sanford to Rubbermaid, so I've kind of followed them through the ages, and they've always been the softest pencil that I've used, uh, and I always really like that soft pencil. So when I first started swatching them, my first impression was they don't feel like Prismacolors, they feel harder than Prismacolors to me, they don't feel as soft as I was expecting them to be. Here's the range of the 36 colors here that I have, and there are a bunch of different um, sets available as well as open stock that you can find online. I'm going to look link to Blick because that's where you can buy them in the United States. Um, if you're in another country, you might have to look on your local art supply sellers because um, I went to Jackson's to see because Jackson's always sold all over the world, shipped worldwide, and apparently they used to sell Holbein for about the same price as what we would pay here in the United States, but um, I don't think they're selling them anymore, so it may be tricky to find these, so that's going to be one of the biggest disadvantages of these pencils is just availability. But I feel like there's a nice arrangement of colors here. You've got a good arrangement of reds. As someone who likes to draw flowers a lot, that's really important to me. There's a nice selection of yellow We've got some nice earth tones. We've got some nice blues, some nice greens. Um, so this comes with really a really nice selection. 
Now here, I did look at the brochure and I used, um, for some reason that looks so 80s to me, I just love it. Um, I did use the Google Translate application to translate the um, some of the information on the swatch because it was all in Japanese and it's saying that it's an oil-based pencil. Now, pencils are a mixture of oil and wax and it just depends on what's more prevalent and what they say their pencil is. But I have to say these did not feel like an oil-based pencil to me. These definitely felt more waxy because they're more opaque and they're a little softer. So take it for what it's worth. And also considering that it was translated through a free app on my phone, it might not be 100% accurate. Uh, one of the nice things about these pencils is that they have a light fast rating. They have a light fast system. It appears to be their own system. And I did have to use my Google Translate to see what the, um, what the stars stood for. So basically it goes from a zero stars to three stars, zero stars being like not light fast or not rated. Um, and three being excellent light fast. They consider all of their stars though, to be like a excellent light fast will not fade. And you know, moderately light fast, I guess, or they don't call even the one star a low light fast color. So I'm, I'm a little skeptical of those ratings. I prefer when companies use a third party light fast testing source like ASTM to do their light fast testing. A lot of companies also use the blue wool scale if they're a European company. But the thing I liked about the Derwent light fast is that they also they used the um, ASTM to do their light fast testing. So they're not just saying their pencils are light fast. Also the ASTM is. Um, I'm not saying that these are not, but some colors with a range of 150 colors, it's it's hard to believe that all those colors will be light fast, especially when you see what like Derwent had to go through to get light fast colors. It was like mostly earth tones at first and it was slowly releasing colors out until they could get that full range. I'm not like, I'm not um, paid by any of these companies <laughs> to review products. So I'm not like, uh, I may be a little bi biased to Derwent just because I've used their products for so long, but um, I'm trying to be as unbiased as, pop as, as possible. But when I'm looking at all of these violets that have a one star rating, I find it very hard to believe that those are, um, are light fast or those will not fade as the, as the brochure says. Uh, I find it very difficult to believe that because those are just Colors that are very hard to be light fast. If you buy watercolors, any of those like bright pinks and bright purples, a lot of those are fugitive colors. They're not going to last more than five or 10 years. So I don't know what their, what their range of, of light fastness is. But anyway, they do go, um, that extra mile to provide light fast information. And I do appreciate that when any company does. The colors that have no light fast ratings would be the fluorescence and those are not part of this set here. But you can find this information in the brochure that would come in your set. Um, they have a variety of different sets available from an assorted, like 12, 24, 36, 100, and 150, I believe. And they also have 50 color sets, like a 50 pastel set. Um, and there's probably ways to buy them so you can avoid duplicates, but I'm not that familiar with their set makeups. I would say if I was going to purchase more, I would purchase the pastel colors because I think that's something that they have that is very unique to their pencils that is not easily replicated in other brands. Um, so that's just uh, kind of my, uh, that would be my advice if you're considering picking up some of these and you want to know what's the wisest spend, I would say to get the pastel colors because it's very difficult to find good um, satur it's a saturated pastel, good opaque um, robust pastels. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but I mean like a pastel that's not like hard and scratchy and wishy-washy like a good pastel color. I did swatch on black as well, just so you can see how opaque they are. They are pretty opaque. Um, I mean, obviously some of the more vibrant colors are gonna be less opaque, like your reds and your bright blues. Um, but overall, I found them to be quite opaque, which is really handy if you like to work on toned paper or you like to work in mixed media. So say you wanna do watercolor or gouache and then add uh, these pencils on top. These are gonna stand out on top of them. And that's kind of how I work. So I was very pleased to see that. So let's look at the pencil themselves. They are, um, they have gold writing on them, which is kind of difficult to read. I don't like um, fine gold writing or silver writing just because it's hard for me to read. Um, I'm getting up there, <laughs> I'm in my mid forties. So it's, it's, just it's just difficult to read. I prefer a larger print. And I actually, even though gold printing, gold foil on pencils looks fancy and is beautiful, it's just not practical for me. I prefer um, higher contrast in my lettering. But anyway, um, on the pencil, you're going to see Holman Artist Colors. 
in Japan. These are made in Japan. Um, and on the other side, you're going to see the Holbin logo and then Holbin Works Limited. You'll see the light fast rating. So this is violet. It's got two stars and the, the color name and as well as the number, the color number. So um, that's kind of handy because if you want to swatch, I didn't bother with only 36 colors. I didn't bother writing the numbers down. But say if you had 150 colors and you wanted to make a swatch, you could just write down the number and not have to spell it all the names. So um, it would just be a little bit of a time savings, which is nice. And also sometimes companies will change color names over the years, especially if a name is problematic. Like uh, I know a lot of companies used to call like a peachy apricot color flesh tone. So that's obviously not accurate. There are a lot of flesh tones. So, you know, they might change a name, but keep the color number so that if somebody has an older set, then it will, um, it'll still be relevant. Uh, so it's nice when they have the numbers and the names in case they decide to change it for some reason. Um, and there you can see, I did color this in with a black marker and then did the white on top. The white is nice and opaque and uh, I was really pleased with that. The pencil itself is a 7.8 millimeter lead, uh, I'm sorry, barrel, which is really uh, comfortable to hold. It's your standard size, about the same size as um, any of your standard colored pencils. Now Derwent's are a little bit oversized and your budget pencils are a little bit undersized. So this will fit in like, I have a three hole sharpener and this will go right in my standard hole, but it is a pretty tight fit. I honestly, We'll go to the larger hole just because I feel like it's a little too tight of a fit in the standard hole. So comparatively to Prismacolor, it's just like maybe a smidgen um, larger in feel. So there's my Prismacolor. There is a um, there is a Holbin. I just feel like the Holbein is, um, I'm not sure which way to say it, Holbein or Holbin. Um, they're very, very similar. I don't know if you'd even notice a difference, but I would say they're just like maybe just, and maybe it's the coat, a double dip of a coating of paint or something. They're just a little bit tighter in my, in my pencil sharpener. Um, but yeah, they're, they're capped ends. They're well made. I didn't have any breakage issues on any of these except for the black. It broke once when I was sharpening it. Um, these do tend to wear down a little quickly, so you will sharpen more often. So since I got a chance to sharpen a lot of these multiple times, I don't, I wouldn't say there's any breakage issue. And this was sent to, uh, to Jane and she sent it to me. So it's been through the mail a few times over continents. So, um, so I think that's a pretty good sign there. Um, now let's compare it with the pencils I find these to be the most similar with. I'm just gonna set these aside for a second. Um, what I do when I get a set of pencils is I do this a swatch on a fairly smooth watercolor paper that has a stripe of alcohol marker down. And the reason I do that is just to kind of keep consistency throughout my swatches because um, a lot of times when I'm reviewing a product, I'm, a lot of times they will remind me of something. I'm trying to figure out what does this feel like because oftentimes you have the same pencils from different companies coming out, especially in the budget pencil ranges. Not I won't say in any of the artist grade pencils, but in the budget ranges, you will see the same thing from different companies. So here is my Holbin swatch and I'm just gonna zoom in here so you can see it a little closely. I also like to swatch out my black and white because I like to have a nice strong black and white, especially with a limited palette. It's important that those colors um, exist and are um, are reliable because your black is going to be necessary for darkening in a limited palette and your white is going to be necessary for highlighting in a limited palette. Um, a lot of times with budget pencils your white is basically just a blending pencil because it has no oomph to it but the Holbein white does have some oomph. As you can see the colors are very opaque. Um, they've got good coverage and I pretty much put down a thick layer. With these swatches I do a thick layer. I don't do layering. It's just to mainly to see what can I lay down um, with a pretty firm layer on, on paper going over light and dark. That's that's what the pur purpose of these swatches for me are. Uh, so it's different than the layered swatches that I showed you a minute ago. So the first thing I thought I would check, well, Holbein is a Japanese pencil. The only other Japanese pencil I have is the Tombow or Rojitin. So I thought I would compare them. Now, color-wise, I found them very similar. However, it's a heck of a lot harder to get color out of an Rojitin pencil than the Holbein pencil. Um, they're similarly opaque to the Holbein, but I just found the Rojitin always just kind of hard, dry, and scratchy, even though they did lay out the color. Also, their lead was thinner. So although I got a similar opacity, and the colors are kind of similar. They didn't feel the same. They felt very different. Uh, now the Erogeton does have a nice pastel range, but I also found it a lot more work to get the color out of the Erogetons than the Holbeins. So the other one I thought, well, let's let's compare it to my tried and true Prisma colors. I use those a lot, and um, people say how soft the Holbins are, and my softest pencils are Prisma colors. So let's compare. Um, color wise, I found the Prisma colors to be a little more saturated, but um, and to lay down a lot quicker but they were much um, 
creamier and smooth and slicker feeling. They felt more um, just softer overall than the Holbein's, but I think that if you were used to Prismacolor, it wouldn't be too big of a jump to go to Holbein's and get a very similar um, effect from them. But they didn't feel like the similar, they didn't feel like they were the same leads. They didn't feel similar. And then I thought, you know what these really feel like? And this is probably going to shock some people, but these feel most to me like Arteza pencils. And I have, I'm using an Arteza set from 2019. This is what the box looks like. It's a, the 120 set. Um, I know they have come out with, uh, with different pencils. Some people have said that they've got the 120 set and the colors bleed. These pencils absolutely are completely water resistant. So, um, I just want to put that out there that you might not get the same pencils that I am, that I have if you have just ordered Arteza pencils, but, um, I'm comparing them to the set that I have and they just felt so much like the Arteza pencils. They actually felt a lot like the older Arteza pencils I have that do bleed if you add water to them, but just the, the, um, uh, just the feel of them, the firmness of them, the, um, the color payout of them, they very much felt like Arteza's. Now, they're not as opaque as the Arteza's though, so I wouldn't say they're the same lead, but it does make me think that maybe when Arteza designed their pencils, they went to try to copy Holbein a bit, because even the build quality, and I'm going to show you this here, um, I'm going to show you an Arteza versus a Holbein, they do look quite similar, you know, the, um, from the, uh, the capped and the, um, this, like Arteza has different font, obviously, and a silver rather than a gold printing, but I mean, they do have a very similar look. They also look kind of like the polychromos, so it wouldn't surprise me if they were just trying to, like, look like a high-end pencil when they came out with theirs. I mean, you're looking at, like, $3.19 a pencil versus $0.50 cents a pencil, so I wouldn't call it, you know, like, they're they're definitely not the same animal, but man, they feel the same. Coloring with an Arteza, drawing with an Arteza, and drawing with a Holbein, they were very, very similar. And I know that's going to rise some ire, and I don't mean to. I'm not like, I'm not trying to, you know, start some sort of controversy, but man, they feel the same laying down on paper. Now, Artezas are not opaque like the Holbeins are, but they feel very similar. Like working on white, I don't think you would notice much of a difference. So um, I did go ahead because I have the 120 set and, and I was wondering, geez, I wonder how similar the colors would match color to color. Like if I went color name to color name. And um, so I swatched them out side by side for the color name matches I had. Now, obviously the colors aren't identical, but I found lay down to be very similar and lay down even on some of the Artesas were better than lay down on the whole bind on this watercolor paper. So I was very, very surprised. Um, so it just kind of makes me think because Holbein's been a lot, been around longer and they've been a, like a high end, um, well-respected brand for a long time. So I, it wouldn't surprise me if they were the inspiration of the Arteza pencils. Um, so if you have the Arteza pencils like from 2019 and they're too hard for you, you don't like the color lay down, I would avoid the, the Holbeins unless you're just going to get some pastels because the Arteza line does not have a good pastel range because they're not an opaque pencil. Um, like Prismacolor pastels are decent for the ones that they have because they're quite an opaque pencil. It's going to be difficult to find an oil-based pencil or a pencil that's that's wax-based that doesn't have the opacity that, um, that will rival the Holbein pastels. And that's where I would go if I was going to invest in some Holbeins. I would get some more pastels because I do find them to be quite unique. But man, just coloring side by side, I find them to be extremely comparable. So here, this is a, um, a coloring page from Altenew, from their watercoloring um, book. And Altenew is a stamp company. This is So this is meant to like color and use on a greeting card. Um, this is one of their no-line colorings. And I was just kind of playing around. And I did not like using the Holbeins in tight spaces like this. They almost felt kind of gummy and sticky on the watercolor paper. And I didn't really care for it. But I thought, I'm going to try the Artezas as well, just to compare. So. This, these two petals and this leaf I did in Holbein, this petal and that leaf I did in Arteza's. The Arteza's being a little bit harder of a pencil, I found performed a little bit better on this watercolor paper. But um, I just want to see how comparable, like, the colors would build up and layer. And I thought they were actually very comparable. I just wanted to, uh, just wanted to put that out there. In fact, um, we could do a quick little demo. I've got, I could grab the, the Holbeins that are similar in color. Um, what's this? Is this the, the magenta and the pink there? I'll get this magenta and pink and we can and white and we'll so we'll take the whites from each. We'll just do a quick little demo here just to compare. So um, I'll do these two, these two here. I'm going to start off just by doing a very light coating of the pink with the Holbein. Okay, very, I'm just going to go quick here guys. This isn't like 
this is how I'm recommending that you color. I'm going to go in with a very light bit of the shadow magenta color here. This is the turned petal. I'm going to have my shadow up here under the turned petal. And I am going to go in a little bit with the white on the edge. Not a lot. I'm not burnishing yet, but I will burnish in a second. Now I'm going to go in with my pink a little bit firmer, not to like harm your hands. Now, something I want to mention that the colors lay down really easily. And if you're working in a coloring, uh, like an adult coloring book, you're not going to have a textured paper like this. <laughs> and I think you would find that the um, the Holbeins were not difficult to use. Now, they're not as soft as a Prismacolor, so keep that in mind. But I don't feel like I have to really start uh, applying pressure until I get much further along. I'll show you my layering in just a second. I, I got 10 layers on watercolor paper, but I didn't feel like I really had to put much pressure down until about layer 7. Now I'm just going to go in there and with some pressure get my darkest color. Gonna work over with the pink to blend it out with some now I'm being firm here lightening up as I get down to the highlight and then go into the highlight to brighten it up and get my blend there all right we're gonna do that with the Artezas real quick same same uh, process I'm gonna coat everything with a really light layer Try to be the same pressure I was at with that first light layer. And, and granted, these are not perfect color matches. So um, they're just kind of as close as I could come. You'd think with 120 of any color, you'd have plenty, wouldn't you? Uh, but that's all right, because you can mix your color pencils. You can shift them. I'm going in with my shadow here because that's kind of like nestled in. I'm going to do a little shadow under this turn of the petal, too. I'm going to do I'm going to do my white here. Gosh, got to make sure I grab the right colors. Hope I did. Not too much, just a little bit in the center where it'd be a little bit more highlighted. I'm going to go over with the pink. Blend out that magenta a little bit. I am using pressure. Sharpen up the edge go back in with the magenta to darken things up. The magenta from Holbein is much more purpley and the magenta from Arteza is much more a neutral. It's still cool but it's not as purpley and you can see that when you compare there. And then I'm just going to blend over with the white. Oh my white. Ah crap. Forget that side of the petal. We're just going to go over here now. So very similar lay down. I'm just going to cross that out so we don't don't look over there. Nothing to see there. But very similar. I mean, you might need to work a little bit more because it's a harder pet. Well, actually, I found them both to be about the same the same hardness, but very similar, very similar lay down. So I did a layering test here and um, when I got to about layer seven, I had to start adding more pressure and then got to 10. And here I did five layers, added some solvent, which is odorless mineral spirits, Gamzol. And then I did the same with the Arteza and added solvent. And it really, they really uh, blended out about identically. So um, feel wise, they feel a lot like the Arteza pencils to me. And I thought that was just very interesting. And I'm not trying to cause any drama or get anybody all worked up or wound up or anything, but that's just what I found in my exhaustive, um, my exhaustive research here. So I also did a rainbow blend with those four colors that I showed you the swatch from. And uh, the Holbein and the Arteza definitely performed the most similar. Prismacolor was my favorite out of these four as far as the rainbow blend because uh, it was so smooth and the Erogeton was my least favorite just because I, I've always struggled with those pencils because they are so, they seem almost very weakly pigmented. I did a blending ball with the Arteza and Holbein. I just looked at the colors and blended by, and picked colors by eye rather than going by names because the names don't match up. Although, um, although they're pretty similar as I showed you from that swatch. And um, I just want to go over the pros and cons and then, oh, first also the pastels here. 
So these are the Holbein pastels. Like I said, I think that that's where I would invest if you're considering picking up whole, some Holbein pencils, maybe trying a few because they are expensive. Um, I would go with the pastels because their pastels are rich and luscious, whereas other pastels can be kind of scratchy and weak. The Prismacolor pastels are, they're smooth and nice. However, they, they just don't get the lighter tones that Holbein provides. Orogetines are very hard and scratchy. Arteza really doesn't have much for pastel and they can be kind of streaky because it's like they don't have the white pigment in there. It's like they just have more binder to lighten them up instead of having white, which I like a nice creamy pastel in a pencil. I don't want a transparent pastel. I want an opaque pastel. And Arteza's pencils are just not opaque. They're not, they're not like a Prismacolor or a Holbein. Um, the pros. 150 colors in the Holbein range. Prismacolor and Holbein, I think, are the only ones that have 150 colors for like uh, colors that are available open stock, meaning you can buy one at a time. I know some budget pencils offer larger assortments, but there's so many samey colors in those budget pencils that offer large assortments. When you're looking at like a Prismacolor or a Holbein, you're not gonna have, I don't believe, I don't have all the 150 Holbeins, but my friend Jane swatched them out for me and I didn't see them to be, um, I'll grab her swatches that she made. Um, I didn't see them to, I didn't think they were overly samey looking. If you want to look, I'll flip through while I go through the pros and cons here. Um, uh, so very unique 150 colors like Prismacolor offers. And um, thick lead like Prismacolor. They have light fast ratings. Prismacolor doesn't have light fast ratings on theirs, I don't think. Maybe they do. I think there's been independent light fast testing done by like um, a Color Pencil Society. But I mean, look at these rich tones. They're all, they're all unique. They're all different. I love that. Um, light fast ratings are available, Th thick lay down so you can lay down color fast if you're like me and you like to put a lot of color down fast and they can be blended with odorless mineral spirits. I didn't use them with a powder blender. I don't think they would be my first choice with powder blender because I think they'd get a little gummy and um, would probably not be the best ones to use with a powder blender. But as far as like burnishing by hand or odorless mineral spirits, they work so well because there's such a thick lay down. Now the cons is the price. The price has dropped on Blick. They were going for over $4 a pencil, but now they're 316 open stock and they have different um, sets, which will bring the price down slightly. Like if you get the 150 set, that's $425, which is $2.83 a pencil. So still kind of on the pricey side. Uh, like that's double what you would pay on Blick for um, Polychromos. And it's like triple what you would pay for Prismacolor if you're buying, you know, 12 or more pencils. So uh, definitely, uh, you know, that's something to consider because is it really worth double or triple the price from other, you know, comparable brands? And of course, if you're comp comparing them to Arteza, Arteza's like around 50 cents a pencil in a set. So um, those are way cheaper. Um, but they, you know, and the Artezas have light fastness ratings, but I don't necessarily trust them. But I I, the only light fast pencils I trust are Derwent light fast personally, um, and probably probably Polychromos. But you can find non light fast pencils in any artist range for the most part, unless it's like Derwent light fast. So, um, and I think Luminance, Karen Dosh Luminance, I don't have those, but they are also very light fast. Um, and the tips wear down fairly quickly, so you got to do a lot of sharpening, and that could you know make you use up your pencil a lot faster than you know. Than other comparable pencils. So they seem to wear down as quick or maybe even quicker than the Derwent Light Fast, but um, I, I actually it seems like I had to sharpen those more than the Light Fast when I was using them. So I don't know. So they're, they're small things. Derwent Light Fast has been running on sale at Blick for like $2 a pencil, um, and their regular price was like four. So I would say they're very comparable in retail price, but what you actually pay, you can pay much less for Derwent Light Fast because um, I think they just trade more freely with, with uh, more countries than um, the Japanese companies do. Anytime you're getting a product, an art supply imported from Japan, it's expensive. Um, they have very high GDP, a very high personal income and GDP in Japan. So, um, you know, their labor co costs are more and they just, you know, their stuff costs more, it seems. Um, but overall, I do recommend these. I wouldn't say they're my favorite pencil. I wouldn't say I'm going to run out and buy the 150 set. That's not going to happen, but I would invest in some more pastel tones once I figure out what the, uh, I would definitely check what I have in Prismacolor and uh, Lightfast and see with the swatches that Jane sent me what um, what would really benefit adding to my collection. I have so many pencils, but I would say that the pastel ones would be worth it to me to purchase. Maybe not the set of 50 pastels, but you know, probably some open stock ones that are unique from what I have. So I hope you found this useful. I know it was kind of a long video, but I, if you're going to spend that kind of money, I want to make sure you have the information that you need to make an educated decision and, you know, check out other people's reviews too, because, um, 
that's important. And make sure you check out Jane's channel. I will link to it down below along with the review of the pencils that I sent her if you're curious. She's awfully fun and I think you'll really enjoy her channel. So thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. And until next time, happy crafting.